Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to episode 3 of our tutorial series for PGA Tour 2K21. In today's episode, we are going to be going over putting. We're going to be going over what methods work for putting to get the distance right. What tips for putting I have if you're not using the power bar for like the TGC Tours. What grips seem to work the best for putting. And then we're going to be going over my in-depth look at green grid reading to try and help everybody who is struggling with putting get to a place where they can at least get the ball close to maybe, you know, save a par or make some of those putts that they may be missing for eagle, birdie, or a par save. So we're going to be going over it all today on this video. So this may turn into a little bit longer of a video, uh, but this will be your one-stop shop for what I'm going to be using and what you can also use to maybe help you gain some strokes back out on the putting surface. Because I know a lot of people are struggling with it this year, so hopefully I can help you today. And we're gonna go over to the game now. We're already at the putting green, and I'm just gonna go over briefly just some tips on putting in general, how to get the best stroke for the putting, what grips work, putting without the meter, how I putt without the meter, uh, and things that you can use to improve your game just in the form of keeping the line straight, which I still struggle with, but also getting that power down a lot better. So we're gonna start today on how you can improve hitting that power mark that you are looking for. Now I know at the time of this video, PlayStation has a bug where some people are pulling the stick back. It's going into the, you know, the white bar and then it just decreases distance for some reason. I do believe plugging in a headset still works. Not 100% sure on that. And I know it's a bug. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, this will be for when the controller works for you. We just have to wait for the patch to come out. Uh, but let's say that we have a putt, you know, maybe a short 15 footer. What a lot of people tend to do when they first at least start with the game, they kind of get into the 2019 mindset. The 2019 mindset for the golf club was you pull the stick all the way back in the out into the housing. All the way, all the way back. You just, you slam it back and you wait for the animation to catch up. This year in 2K21, that's just not the case. You, you, I mean, you can do it. It's just a lot harder to do that and to hit the correct power that you're looking for. Uh, especially at higher difficulties, you usually blow just right past it. So this year in 2K21, what you have to do is you have to pull that thing back slowly. You need to have some finesse on the club. Um, you pull the stick back very slowly, you know, get to the power that you need and then complete your swing for your downswing. Uh, if you just slam it back like this, you're going to get a lot of overpowers, a, a slightly, uh, a slightly overpower, slightly underpower as you're trying to stop it on time. So all you have to do is just pull it back slowly, very slowly. Hit the mark that you want, complete your swing. But when it comes to at least getting the power down, um, this is the best way to putt. And honestly, now that I've had some time with it, I actually don't mind the putting in 2K21. That was one of the detractors that I have, but after a while, you just kind of get used to it and you kind of learn to enjoy it, honestly, uh, except for the bad misses that I have, pushing and pulling putts, but... That's golf, I guess in the end, that's golf. Uh, and I need to clean that up to take the next step for sure. So just remember, pull it back slowly. Um, as far as grips go, I have found that um, getting more control of the stick on the putter actually helps me. Uh, and what I mean by that is just putting a lot more thumb on the controller um, to pull it back straight and to finish. Uh, and you kind of do the same exact finish that you do for me. Swinging, I pretty, I pretty much slam the stick up uh, and follow through with it just to avoid any of those weird, you know, misses to the left or to the right at the top of the uh, swing plane. So I'll pull it back slowly. I'll hit the power that I want and I'll pretty much slam it forward like I was shooting a regular shot. Also a pinch method. And what I mean by that is pinching the thumb on the bottom of the stick and your index finger on the top. That also helped me, especially on a PlayStation controller. Um, keep a little bit more control 
and to get the power a little bit more dialed in as well since you have a little bit more control over it. So a pinch method might work for you. You know, what your regular swing is might not work for your putting. It, it comes down to like it was in the swing video or swing plane. You need to find something that works for you and never change it. Uh, but once you find that grip that you're looking for, um, come out onto the practice screen and practice it or do it, uh, do it on the, on the course. Just practice that stroke and keep practicing it over and over again. Um, until you get something that you, that you like, uh, get something that's straight, that has good power control, all of it. So that's like the, the first step in getting your putter ready. Um, once you get there, I mean, it's just going to the power, hitting it straight, all of that. When it comes to like something like the TGC tours, uh, you're going to have to putt without the meter. So let's turn the meter off real quick and I'll show you what I do with no meter. So right here, we're aiming 25 feet to this cup. Uh, what I'll do with the meter is I use the vibration feedback. I know that some people don't like the vibration feedback. They would rather, you know, try or do something else like practice swings, which we'll go over. Um, but what I do is I use the vibration feedback. Now it's not a good way, especially on master. It's not a good way to judge power just because it's such a small window that by the time it vibrates and you push forward, it, you a lot, not a lot of the time, but I mean, a good chunk of the time, you'll miss your power. Either you'll short it trying to expect it or you'll hit it a little bit long because maybe your reflexes aren't good enough. So what I do is I pull it back until I feel the vibration. Right there. Right there. Right there. And I find where that is at on my backswing. And I just do that. Yep. And I hit it. I find it and I hit it, uh, just like that. You you just you 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 pull it back slightly. You feel that vibration. You see where that is in your backswing, and then you just do that same exact stroke. Not even worrying worrying about you know feeling the vibration. After I find my mark on my putter, I don't even pay attention to the vibration at all. I find where it's at on my backswing, and I just do that backswing. Feel it, feel it. Yep. Vibration, vibration, and then I just do that stroke again and don't even think about the vibration after that. Uh, because as soon as you try to, to play for the vibration, you'll notice that you end up shorting a lot, hitting a lot long, um, and that's still going to happen, especially a master. The window, like I said, is so small to miss it that you're going to short some putts, you're going to hit some long. It's just, it is bound to happen just because of the difficulty of this game. Eventually, we'll all get to the point where we don't even need the vibration. We'll just know the putts. That's just how it is. We just, we'll just know. Uh, it's a little bit different. That's why it's taking people a little bit longer. Uh, the putting system, you know, when it came to from the Golf Club 2 to 2019, didn't really change too much. So we kind of had everything already memorized. So it came very second nature. Uh, this year, it's a lot different. So it's taken a lot more time to get, you know, where is 24 feet on this putt? 144 foot greens. Um, where Where is that here? Eventually, we'll all get to the point where if you play enough, We'll all get to the point where we know that and won't need the vibration, but it is a good tool to use to get your putting where you want it or the distance that you are going for. And honestly, when it comes to tips like, you know, power and hitting it straight, that's, I mean, that's pretty much all I've, I've got for you. You just got to find something that works for you. And just, again, just like this, getting the swing plane straight, you just have to keep pounding that same swing into your brain until it just becomes second nature and you're just hitting straight right powered putts all the time just got to keep at it keep practicing uh, but once you find something that works for you never change it because if it works for a week it'll work for two years or however long we're going to be playing this game let's move on to my way of reading greens i'll give you the the baseline of it and then we'll actually go out onto the course and I'll give you some examples of it. And hopefully this will help you at least get the ball closer to the hole so that you're not three putting, four putting, five putting. Um, hopefully, you know, two putts. Two putts or less is what we're always striving for. Birdie putt and saving par. So that's why I'm going to try to help you now. Now, it is a little bit cumbersome, I would say. Uh, just the way the greens work this year, it, it is a little cumbersome, but there are 
other methods that are even crazier. I'll tell you that they're they're probably a lot more accurate. Um, but you're getting into a point where you're like counting out. I need 97 uh, taps to the right, and you're just sitting here going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to 97. Like I, I like to keep things a little bit simpler for everybody. It still is counting. It still is math, uh, but it is a I would say a modified version of a method that worked in 2019 called the hippie sign method. Uh, so this is a little bit of a modified version. So I'll be going over how to aim left to right and I'll also be going over how to gauge your distance, whether it's uphill, downhill and what you do for it. So let's get started on how this all works. So looking over a green, you'll see that there are four colors. There's green. There's yellow, there's orange, and there's red. Each one of these colors is broken down into three sections. You have three in green, three in yellow, three in orange, three in red. And the way that they're broken down is based on speed of the dots on the grid line. Slowest for green is one. The next fastest is two. Next fastest is three. Then you get into yellow, four, five, six. Orange, 7, 8, 9, and red, 10, 11, 12. So the color breakdown for it is you have a one slope, which is a slightly moving green, which is to be something like this. You have a two slope, which is a little bit faster, and it's a lot more solid of a green color, which will be something of this nature. You have a three slope that is still green, but has actual a slight tint of yellow to it. So it's going to be a little bit lighter of a green, which means something like this slope here. It's still green, but it has that slightly yellowish tint. That would be a three slope. A four slope is a yellow slope, but it's slightly tinted green. So you get into a position where it's a little bit lighter. So something like this, it's still has a little green in it, but it's started, it's more yellow than it is green for sure. A five slope is a solid yellow, so something like this. And then a six slope is when you start to get into the orange. So it's yellow, but it has a slight tint of orange. That is a six slope. A seven slope is more orange than yellow. An eight slope is a solid orange color. A nine slope is an orange into a red. So that would be, you know, we come over here. Something of this nature, it's orange, but going into a red. A 10 slope is red, more red than orange. Uh, an 11 slope is pure red, and a 12 slope is just super dark red and zooming. So, you know, something like that would be a 12 slope. So those are the numbers that you have to remember and the slopes that you have to remember. So let's just take this putt, for instance, right here. We're not going to do elevation yet. I just want to go over how you would count this 23 footer out. You'd start at your golfer. And right now we're about halfway in between one of these blocks. And each of these blocks is three feet. So what you do is every three feet, you count the slope out. So like this one, this is a one from our golfer to halfway. That's a one slope. It's hardly moving green. Um, so that is a one slope. This is also a one slope from here to here. So now we're at two because you're adding them all up. So one, two, another one, three, another one, four. This gets into a two slope. It's starting to move a little bit faster. This is six. This is seven. And this is eight to the cup. So you just count it all out from where you're at to the cup. So that is an eight. All right, so what you do is you, you count this all out. It was eight, so we're gonna count eight to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there we go, that is eight clicks to the left to adjust for our left to right break. And then we are going to hit the ball. All right, it ended up short, 
broke out a little bit more to the right. So why is that? Well, that's because we didn't factor in the elevation of the putt. So the way that elevation works is fairly straightforward. Downhill, let's say this was a downhill putt. For every inch it is downhill, you subtract one off where you're aiming to. So if this was three inches downhill, you're going to aim for 20 feet. And we'll get into a little bit of an adjustment you have to do for downhill putts as well. But that is the baseline. It's 23 and it's downhill three inches. You aim for 20 feet. Every inch is a foot. Uphill every inch, you actually have to aim in a foot and a half past. So this is three inches uphill, which means we have to aim four and a half feet further than the hole. Three times 1.5. So for this, we would aim for 27 and a half feet. But let's count this out again. We got a one slope. It's changed because it's a different, a little bit different of a putt. So we got a one slope. So one, two, it actually flattens out for this position that I'm in. So none here, none here. Three, because this is another one slope. Five, this is a two slope. Back to a one slope for six. So let's count out to six. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. We're going to go the four and a half feet that we need to go because three inches uphill, one and a half feet per inch. Three times 1.5, four and a half. So we're at, looking for 27 and a half. So this is where we're going to be aiming this putt in particular. 23 feet, a break from left to right, slightly uphill. And it's right into the cup. So, hopefully that made sense. And we're going to see a lot of examples. But so far we've covered what slopes. And, and how you calculate the slopes. For where you're aiming left to right. We've also covered elevation. Every inch, foot and a half. For uphill, every inch is just an inch down. So, like this, we'd aim for 20 feet. To hit it right at the cup. It can come if you know if you're worried about overshooting it, you can play it back a little bit. If you want to maybe, you know, hit a little bit firm, you can give it a little bit more, but 20 feet will get it right to the cup. So I did say, what about downhill? So let's do that right now. All right, so here we have a putt that's four inches down. We have a 17 foot putt, four inches down. We already know we're going to have to aim for 13 feet to get this right at the cup. But. When you're dealing with a downhill putt, you actually have to adjust slightly on how far you go to the left or to the right. So what I've come up with is every two inches downhill, you have to add another either click to the right or click to the left, depending on how the slope is. So every two inches, you have to add one more. So you count it out. So the slope that we have, this is a four slope. So four three slope to seven, nine, 11, 13 is what we're counting right here. Um, but we're not exactly in the middle. We're a little bit behind center and the cup is always center. So we're going to do 14. You now add a little bit extra because we have to account for that difference on where our golfer is to where the cup is. So 14 is our slope calculation but it is also four inches down for every two inches we're gonna add one more click to the right or click to the left in this case it's a click to the right so every two inches we add a click to the right so we have to add two more so we're at 16 so we'd count out 16 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and we know we need to aim at 13 feet because it's four inches down from where we're at right now. So this is where we're aiming. And now we just hit the ball. Oh, we skimmed it a little bit, but it was still a really close putt. I mean, maybe if we, if we counted that out again, we might be a little bit more over to the right because you have to keep, try to keep the most consistent of clicks to the left and the right as you can. Um, also there is a difference like if you as you see 13 means 33 
13 also means 34, so you do have to get everything right. And if we strike it again, that time it goes in. So it is a very, very specific thing, but this is the method for downhill putts. So you count it out the same as you would before, but when it's a downhill putt, you have to add a little bit extra because you're not hitting it as firm, which means that that break at the beginning is going to be a little bit more steep than if it was if you were hitting an uphill putt. Now, if you're asking how do you do flat putts, flat putts, I actually act as if it's an uphill putt. I always hit a little bit harder on flat putts to beat through the break the same way that I would on if it was an uphill putt. So if this putt was completely flat, I would aim as if it was 20 feet instead of 17 feet, just to act as if it's an uphill putt to beat through that break and count it out the same. So when it comes to flat putts and uphill putts, the counting method that you do is the same. For downhill putts, you only add that little bit extra, one click to the right or to the left, dependent on elevation change. For every two inches, you add one, click to the left or click to the right. So now there is a couple of caveats in here, and one of those caveats is any putt under 10 feet. So when you get to 10 feet, if you notice when you click, it barely, barely moves. Like it is, if you did the counting method, you know, one, two, three, like it, it just doesn't work because it is so close to the pin. So when you get to something like this, you count it out the same. We have a two slope, a one slope, a one slope, for four in total. Uh, it is downhill. I always round up for elevation. Since it's one inch down, I'll round up. So we'll add another click as well. So we have two, three, four, five to account for the elevation change. Now for this, you can't do one, two, three, four, five, because if we do that, that's what always happens. Because it is such a small movement on short putts, it just doesn't account for it correctly. So for shorter putts, you need to essentially hold it a little bit longer. You can't do this because it's not going to work. What you need to do is it's a little bit longer of a press. You still count it out though. So for this, we need five. So one, two, three, four, five. This is where we're going to be aiming. Um, you can do nine if it, it's such a short putt that I usually will just hit it straight up to 10. Um, either way works though, because you have such a, a wide margin of miss for shorter putts. So let's hit this one and see where it goes. There we go. That is for any putt under 10 feet. Um, there is a little bit of a margin it it gradually gets closer and closer to just this method uh, the farther you get away from the hole um, but mainly under 10 feet you just have to essentially just hold it a little bit longer for your count uh, and it'll give you the correct left to right shot accuracy that you're looking for to make the putt so there is one caveat and that is for putts over 50 feet so when it comes to 50 feet or above the presses on the controller become very extreme you know you're not getting that very minute you're getting very extreme every time you count one two three four five it's it's a very big big movement to the right or to the left so what you do is you count this out so we'll count this out let's see what we got we got one two here so this is a movement of one slope. So we got two. It starts three, but it's about halfway in. So we're going to say, you know, two and a half is what this would be because it's still a one slope. So we have two and a half. And what you have to do is you have to half it for every putt over 50, 15 above. So we're needing a 1.25 is what we're needing for a click. So that we would do that one and then a little bit extra. We need about a quarter. Again, flat putts, I always aim it as if I'm hitting it uphill. So we're going to aim for 53 feet. We're going to strike the ball. Buttered it. Even if we miss that by a little bit, 
That's okay. As long as we can get it close to get our two putts, that is what we are looking for. And that's the basic guidelines of this modified hippie stein method that I have created. I've used it for about uh, a week and a half now. Mostly off stream because I've been testing it and I don't want to show people, you know, a very bad putting method on stream. Uh, but I've been doing it off stream and I've also been doing it, you know, in between rounds as I'm playing in different modes. Uh, and for the most part, it has been a pretty tried and true putting method. It has bailed me out more than once and it's saved me on some of those longer lag putts that I need to do. It takes a little bit of time to get used to because you are, you know, counting squares and counting it out. And, you know, sometimes the slope will be in between like one of the two. Uh, and that's where you can go with a little bit more of a extreme measure where I've seen some people break it out. I think it's into 20, I think is what it is. So with me, you know, it's one through 12. Some people do one through 20. So you'll get into, you know, a green slope that's a five, and a seven, and you know, that's where you get into those really crazy numbers. And you can absolutely do that. Um, this is more of a simplified method to not only help you bury some more putts, but to save you from getting those dreaded two, three, four putts. So let's go back out on the course. I'm going to show you some examples of just saving par or sometimes drilling a big one. I just want to show you some examples of this method in play so that you kind of, you know, get a better understanding of how the system works and see it in action to see if maybe it's something that you want to try out on the course to maybe improve your putting. So let's head out on the course and yeah, let's let's do some examples. All right, we'll start with something a little bit straightforward. This nice little cool, calm seven footer. So from here we have a one slope, another one slope for two, so we got to go one, two. We have to aim this three feet extra because every inch is an inch and a half. So two times 1.5 is three. We have a seven foot putt. We're adding three feet up to 10. We've already done it out to the right. Now we just hit the ball and take our eagle because I'm playing Short pins, <laughs> or not short pins, but short tees. Well, that's a quick little seven footer, just to kind of show you uh, that in play. That was just a quick one that I did real quick, just to show you how quick and easy it can be, how fast it can be. Quick little birdie right there. Just count it out, aiming it where it needs to go, striking it right into the hole. So one thing I want to show with this putt, it is a, a very downhill putt, but this is one of those scenarios where past the hole, look at this slope out that we have here. We want to protect don't mind the don't don't mind the score either. Sorry. Before I say it, I, that's just me trying to set up a shot. Um, but anyways, we want to try to protect from running this thing off the green because these are fast greens uh, and it slopes heavily past the hole. So this is one of those scenarios where we can aim. It's a 37 foot putt nine inches down. We could aim for 28, but we really want to short this, if anything, because we do not want to run this down the hill and off the green and have to chip. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually count this out and we are going to short this a little bit on purpose so that we don't hit this big slope and run it off the green. So let's count this out. Let's see what we have here. We have a four slope here. So four, another four, eight, back to a three, 11, 15, 19, 22, 25, 29, 32, that's really in between a two and a three. Uh, we'll stick with, we'll stick with 32, 35, 38. We're adding another additional five because 
of the downslope. So we're at 43. So we'll count that out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. And like I said, we can aim it for the 9, but we have a good chance that we're going to run it off the green. So we're actually going to short it a little bit on purpose. So instead of aiming for 28, we're actually going to cut off a couple of feet, aim for 26. If it shorts, that's fine, as long as we can get it close for a chance at a par. We just don't want to run it off the green and have to chip back up onto the green. Because uh, that just will probably lead to a chip into another putt. It's essentially a three putt. So we're going to short it so we don't run it off the hill. And if we make it, great. Okay. Well, we buried it home. We wanted to short it so that we didn't run it off the green. But we made it, so it didn't... I mean, it didn't matter. We, we, we drilled it home, so... Yahtzee. Alright, so here's one of those putts that I was talking about inside 10 feet. This is a very heavy breaking putt, so we're just going to try to make this. These putts are still not easy to make. Even with this method, they are not easy to make. But let's count this out to its entirety. These are solid yellows. So these are going to be 5, 10, 15 would be here, but the cup's in the middle. So we're going to take some off. 13, 4 inches down. We're adding 2 to 15. And we're going to aim this short. So we're inside 10 feet. We need to you know, hold that a little bit longer to account for how little it moves. So we're going to count 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now this isn't a gimme. This isn't a guaranteed putt either. Um... Because this is a heavy breaker. But we're going to try to sneak this one in along this break under 10 feet. See if we can, let's see if we can bury it. This is no gimme, uh, but it's a good test of the method. We did. Perfect. So we drained it. So that's just another scenario of inside 10 feet. You have to hold it a little bit longer just because of how small the adjustments are for shots that close. All right, now I know this is a short putt. This, this is a scenario where it's breaking left to right. So this is what we have. It breaks left here. So we would normally count this two. That's a two slope. So two slope. Then we get to it where it comes back to the right. So what do you count for this? You ignore one block. One three foot block. So we have a two slope, so it's going to start off to the left. This block is going to straighten it out, so we ignore it. So we're still at two to the left. This block, though, brings it back to the right. So we're going to subtract it to zero. And then we have a half here of it breaking back at a two slope. Two times 0.5 is this one. So this is going to be one click over to the left. Because it starts out left, it'll straighten out, it'll break back to the right to get us right back to that spot. And that last little half from here to here will break it back those two inches that we need to get it back into the cup. So then we do the elevation, 4 times 1.5, 6 plus 15. We're aiming for 21 feet here to adjust for the uphill cup position. And we're going to strike the ball. So I know that that was a very short putt, but that's kind of how you do the left to right breaks within this method. You ignore one three foot block of break. Again, it depends. I mean, if it's you're going into like these cute little greens into a orange slope, that's going to affect it. And I would account for that. Uh, but if it's like the same slope into the same slope, it always straightens it out between one three foot block. All right, we got another long one. Breaking left to the right. This will be the last example that I show you. And this is just one of those putts where we just need to get it close. This method is just to either make your birdie putts or get it close to a two putt. 
That's all we are trying to do here. So let's count this out, this long one. Two. Four. Six. Nine. Twelve. Sixteen. Twenty. Twenty-four. Twenty-seven. Twenty-nine. Thirty-one. Ignore. Then subtract. Twenty-eight. Twenty-four. So we're at a twenty-four. As we subtract the left break. Because it's sloping back to the right. So 24. Divided by 2 because we're over 50 foot. So 12 clicks to the left. Or right. Sorry. 12 clicks to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We were 12 inches up. 12 times 1 and a half, 18. So we're going to aim this for 75 feet. Let's hit it. Close. We're a little off on our left break there. But we've got it within two feet. To strike it in for an easy... For me, it would have been a par save if we would have hit that there for our approach shot. So that is the putting method. It's not a guarantee make every time. You just can't... I can't guarantee you a make every time. Just because the grids are three feet that it shows break. Anything can happen in between that three feet. You may get a bead going like this, but then in the middle, it straightens out a little bit. So you're always going to miss some putts. But using this method, I've been able to shave off strokes of my putting game. And for me personally, that's that means a lot. Even if I can shave off, you know, 0 0.2 strokes around per hole, um, that's pretty big for me. Hopefully, it'll shave off a lot more for, for you using this method. I know that you still have to get the, the power and hitting it straight down. But hopefully this way of counting the grid helps you shave some strokes off of the putting green. That's the overall goal for this. You can go above and beyond. You know, you can break it down even more. Instead of 1 to 12, you can do a 1 to 20. You can do a 1 to 50. You can do whatever you'd like. If you really want to break down the slope, um, you could definitely do it. But I feel like this is a very simplified breakdown of the putting green and will at least help you keep it under a two putt. This is a great baseline to start with. Uh, you can make micro adjustments to it the more you use it, but it's a very good baseline to start with to hopefully improve your putting game. It's the method I'm going to use probably from here on out. If I do change it at any point in time, I will post an update video, but this is what I'll be using from here on out until something changes. I hope you enjoyed this. I know it probably got a little bit long, but I wanted to break everything down. I wanted to show examples for everything just to show you it working on the green to not only show you how you should use it on the green, but also show you that it's a fairly good method at not only making putts, but getting putts close so you can at least save a two putt par. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like on the video. Think about subscribing to the channel. I do tons of 2K21 content. We have a career mode going right now that I've been doing. I have more tutorial videos coming out. TGC Tours is starting back up soon. I'm doing fantasy courses of the week. We're doing uh, society rounds. There's just so much. There is a lot of 2K21 content coming. So if you are interested in anything related to this game, think about subscribing to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. Comments, stop by the stream. I stream at twitch.tv slash respawn TV. I stream there Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 4 o'clock Eastern time, p.m., 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and you can stop by there and ask any questions as well. Thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And we'll catch you on the next one. Deuces. <laughs>